Sheriff. Calling car 61. Calling car 61. Go to 479 Arrigo Street. Disturbance. That is all. Dawson. Calling all cars. Intercept to Gray Sedan, headed south on Cottage Grove. Contains six armed men who robbed the Broadmoor National Bank. Cover all bridges leading out of city. The high Street Stand Bridge, Bob, quick! We're practically there, boy. Calling car 17, calling car 17. Go to Vista Street School, take over the crossing. That is all, Dawson. Now that's more like the calls we generally get. That's what I'd like to know. Come on, get out of there. Why, do you know this man? He was my husband. The boy's father? Yes. Divorced? Yes. Who has custody of the child? I have. All right? That's right, officer. I really have no right to the youngster. I've just been driving him home in the afternoon from school. 
However, if I'd known his mother was coming today, I wouldn't have called for him. I suppose you'll want to prefer charges. Charges? Hmm. Abduction. Caught him with the child in the car. Open and shut case. He'd be lucky if he gets off with ten years. Oh, no. Nothing like that must happen. Son, come over here. How old are you? Six, almost seven. Six, almost seven, eh? Now, what do you think we ought to do about this? Well, it's all the same with you, Mr. Policeman. I wish you'd fix it so I could go home with both of them, together. That sounds like a pretty good idea. And we'd call this whole thing a mistake. Let's talk it over on the way home. Please. Well, for the boy's sake, I hope that's all settled. I rather think it is. Back to school, teacher. This is the first time I've heard of the radio patrol solving a matrimonial case. Oh, we get a little bit of everything. You could see they really wanted to be together. Absolutely. And if I were your captain, I'd promote you for the way you handled the situation. If you were my captain, I'd try and get a job around headquarters. By the sound of that speech, I had guess you were Irish. Irish? Well, my name is Tim Conlon. You can use your own judgment. <laughs> I'm Helen Regan. I teach at Vista Street. Regan. Regan. Well, that could be Irish. Irish and the daughter of a police officer. My father's Dan Regan. Not Lieutenant Dan Regan. Yes. Well, that doubles the pleasure of meeting you. Do you know him? No, I don't know him, but that's one man I'd like to shake hands with. Oh, here's the school. And this is my partner, Officer O'Neill. How do you do? Sorry we can't drive you home, but you know how those things are. Oh, that's all right. I know you're not allowed to carry passengers. Only prisoners. Well, I hope I'll never have to ride with you that way. Goodbye. Goodbye. when you went down Vista Street with the two women? Oh, we were just chasing a mistake. Well, if you mean the one you brought back with you, she ain't no mistake. It's Helen Regan, Dan Regan's daughter. Lieutenant Dan Regan? The guy that caught that big Bill Stanish on that Fabian job? That's right. Hey, we could have took her home. Old Caphart wouldn't care about that. Hey, she left her book. Should we take it back to her? No, we won't take it back to her. I'll drop around with her tonight. It'll be a good chance for me to, well, to meet Dan Regan. Hey, listen, you ain't fooling nobody, big boy. It's for examination papers. What is a sex test? <laughs> this poor kid's not going to get a very good mark on this answer to this one. What's he got? He says a sex tent is an instrument with which sailors find their positions at sea. <laughs> well, what is a sextant? Well, anybody knows that. It's six guys that sing in a bunch. Caught four, two escaped. And the ones they brought in are all fellows who used to work with Standish. Well, you put him where he won't work with anyone again. Well, it's a question which of us won. I put him in prison for life, and his bullet put me in this chair. But not for life. 
You know what Dr. Bertram said. There's a possibility you may walk again if they dare take that bullet out. Well, if I can't, I guess we can call it a break of the game. <laughs> Glad to see you going out for a change. I won't be late. Young Davis? Yes. He's getting to be a pretty regular caller. <laughs> guess I'll have to look him up some. You don't have to bother yourself. It's not that serious. Oh, there's Johnny now. Can I get you something before we go? <laughs> no, dear. Have a good time. Where is she? Hello. Oh, why, hello. Come in. No, thanks. I, I just stopped by to return your book. You, you left it in the car today, and I thought you might need it. Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, please, won't you come in long enough to meet Dad? All right. Dad, this is Officer Conlon. I'm glad to know you, Conlon. I'm glad to meet you, Lieutenant. This is the man I told you about who patches up romances. Well, according to evening newspaper, he does other things pretty well, too. You're the same Conlon who cut off that bandit car at the High Street Bridge, aren't you? Yes, we were in on that. Evening, teacher. Hello, Johnny. Come in. Hello, Johnny. Well, Timothy Conlon. How's tricks, Timothy? Car 17 getting lots of action? No, how's everything in the auto business? Okay. Well, I guess there's no need for an introduction. <laughs> well, We've known each other a long time. How you been, Lieutenant? All right. Well, I don't like to rush you away, Helen, but I think we'd better be going. Oh, Conlon's going to stay in trade police stores with me, dear. Well, that's fine. Mm. Thanks again for returning the book, and you come over and see us soon. I'll do that. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sit down. Thanks. Have a cigar? No, thank you. Come on. How well do you know Johnny Davis? Oh, I've known him a long time. We were kids together. Haven't seen much of him, though, since I went on the force. Ever have any trouble with him? No, why? He gave him a pretty hard look when you met. I figured you must have a reason for it. <laughs> well, that was just because he called me Timothy. You know, when I was a kid, they called me that to make me mad, and I, I don't know, I don't, don't seem to be able to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Lieutenant Regan. Yeah, this is Dan Regan. This is Spider Kelly. Remember me? You did me a favor once, so I'm going to give you a tip. There's going to be a break made at Laurel Prison tonight, and Big Bill Standish is in on it. Long distance. Put me through to the warden at Laurel Penitentiary and make it fast. Huh? All lines busy? Well, break through one. I tell you, this is important. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Jailbreak reported from Laurel Penitentiary. Stand by for description of escaped prisoners. Never mind that long distance call, miss. It's not important now. I got a tip off on that, but it came through too late to be of any use. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. One prisoner only, remaining at large in Laurel Jailbreak. He is Big Bill Standish. Bill Standish free again. If he gets back to this town, he'll be hard to find and harder to take. Do you think he'll come back here? Not a doubt of it. Of course, he always swore that someday he'd get out to... Yeah, to finish his job on me. <laughs> and maybe he will. You know, Bill Standish is always bitter about being beaten in that fight at Fabian's. Do you think he'll try to get you? I know it. And I'm hoping that's the thing that'll trap him. <laughs> Helen used to keep a scrapbook of my cases. Yeah, I think it's over there. This it? Yeah, that's it then. Take a good look at that face, Tim, and be sure of one thing. He'll never be taken alive.
work. Well, I've got to take some of that front off. It's uh -huh. good, Harry. Very good. Good enough to fool anybody in this town except one man. Dan Regan. <laughs> he won't be out looking for you. No, but I'll be out looking for him when I get around to it. Extra, extra, standing straight jail. Read all about it. Extra, extra, read all about it. Standing straight jail. Extra, standish at large. Extra, extra, read all about the big jail break. I'll go out and get a paper. You hear that? Well, it's true. And it's a challenge to every man on the police force of the city. Standish, he's at large. And we want him. Either in the back of a squad car with handcuffs on him, or in a morgue wagon with a bullet through his head. Every hour that he's free gives him a chance to dig in and organize. You men will be on 12-hour duty until he's brought in. I promise any man who brings him in an advance of one rank. Now go on, get out, get moving. Let's go, go ahead. Well, here it is. Mm. Yeah, cut through the wall and climb the ventilator pipe to the roof. That sounds like it. You haven't figured how you got over the outside wall yet. No, they wouldn't. A picture there? Yeah, front page. Try this out on Johnny. If it gets by him, it's safe. Oh, uh, my card. Dr. George E. Medicine, consulting surgeon. <laughs> I'll be at the house. Yeah. <clears throat> For my place, we get the car. Three, two, one. Is there anything from Harry or? Hello, Dad. Oh, hello, dear. Are you all right? I just heard about Bill Stanish escaping and I was worried. Now, now, now. There, there's nothing to be nervous about, Helen, dear. Oh, no. Captain Hart's got men watching the house and Conlon's still here with me. Oh, that's fine, Dad. I'll be home right away. Goodbye. They have men guarding the house, and Mr. Conlon is still there. Oh, well, that's fine. I beg your pardon. I was referred here by a friend. I should like to rent a sedan for a few weeks. Oh. Well, sure, we can fix you up, all right? Johnny, I'll wait for you outside. Don't be long. All right, I'll be right out. I should like something conservative, dependable. We got most anything. Ace is number four in. Yeah. We'll check it for gas and oil, wouldn't it? Okay. I think you'll like this one. Now, the car will cost you just $40 a week. Payable in advance. Take it out of what you picked up at the Broadmoor National this afternoon. Steady, you idiot. Don't be in such a hurry to go for that iron. No wonder most of you were nailed today. Takes brains to time a job like that. Huh. The boss. Pretty good, eh, kid? 
Say, it's perfect. Nobody'd know you. Yeah, I wonder. Now, listen, Johnny. You and Harry are the only ones that know about this. I'm not letting anybody else in on it, see? Not anybody. The rest of them get my orders through you. I understand. It was Regan's daughter telephoning just now, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a smart hookup. Don't lose it. I may need it later. Mm-hmm. Number four is ready. Thanks very much, Ace. Here you are, Doctor. Trouble, Doctor. Don't hesitate to call us. We're generally open pretty late. Right. Johnny. Oh, yeah, coming to you. I ain't coming. Read all about the big jailbreak. That is a shame. I ain't be home in just no time at all. I ain't coming. Read all about it. I ain't coming. on 12-hour shifts. I run this whole city through a strainer. I can't find a trace of Stanish. He's here, all right. Yeah, well, I didn't like him to lie low and hide. Well, he's waiting for you to turn your back. Hmm. He'll strike as soon as he's sure you think he's in China or Alaska. I wish he'd make some move and give us a lead to follow. I figured he'd try for you, Dan. Well, how could he? You've got this house and neighborhood covered like a blanket. Yeah, it's still covered. And will be it until I'm absolutely sure what's become of him. Well, you can call your men off tomorrow. Well, why? I'm going to the hospital in the morning. Dan, do you think it's wise? I've had a talk with Doc Bircham. He called a consultation of my last x-rays. And they're ready to try and take the bullet out. Dan, why do you risk it? Well, you've seen Burcham. Yes, he advises against an operation. He told me exactly what your chances are. One in ten that you'll ever walk, and even that you'll come out of it at all. Well, those are pretty good odds, Henry. It's a dangerous business, Dan. Why don't you take time and think it over now? I have. My mind's made up. Helen won't marry while I'm like this. She feels that I'm something she's got to take care of. And it's about time she started to think of her own life. Now, oh, you see, Henry, it isn't fair to let her sacrifice her whole future. No, I've got to let Bertram try. Whichever way it comes out, it's a solution. Look, there's a model on it. What does it say? I can take it. Can you? A smiling Sam. I wonder if I can. Is something worrying you today, Tim? Serious? Very. Is it something you can tell me? Well, I hope so. You know, Helen, I'm a cop that's thought of nothing but his job, maybe sergeant stripes, until two weeks ago. I've got sense enough to feel that well, a man in police work hasn't any business even thinking of marriage. Why not? Because a policeman's wife hasn't very much of a future to look forward to. I know, except worry and anxiety. Wondering if the next telephone call will tell her to go to the hospital or the morgue. I know. I watched Mother go through that. When Bill Standish's bullet crippled Dad, 
think it killed her. That's just about the size of it. Even so, I'm sure she wouldn't have traded those years of worry with Dad for any other sort of life with anyone else. They loved each other. And after all, that's the only thing that really counts. That's exactly what I've been struggling trying to tell you, Helen. Well, I'm fond of you, Tim, but I... I... Oh, that's all right. You don't have to let me down easy. I'll... I'll try to take it like Sam here and come up smiling. I don't know when I can answer your question, Tim. I don't know if I'll ever be able to answer it. But I'm proud you asked me. You know, you're the finest man I've ever known. And I'll always think that. If you ever find that you can answer that question, I'll be around. Oh, it's late. You'll be late for duty and I've got to get to his dinner. Are you going to that masquerade with Johnny tonight? Oh, yes. He asked me months ago. I wish that guy'd leave town. Oh, you're not jealous of Johnny, are you? Of course I am. <laughs> If they give a prize, you'll win it. Oh, that's Blonnie, Dad. Uh, not a bit of it. And now that you're dressed, I've got some news for you. Good or bad? Good. Tell me. I'm going to the hospital in the morning. What well, does Dr. Bertram think it's safe to operate? Of course. Oh, uh, oh that would be wonderful. You've been so patient through it all. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all right, mm. dear. <laughs> it's going to be all right. I think, from the look of your eyes, that you've got a bit of news to tell me. You're too good a detective. I have. Tim asked me to marry him today. Well, I think your happiness ought to be pretty safe in his hands, dear. I think so. You accepted him, then? Mm, uh, well, uh, no, not exactly. Well, what did you tell him? Well, I told him I couldn't answer him now. Why can't you? Never mind why. I'll be able to soon. I'm sort of glad it wasn't young Davis. Oh, Johnny and I were never serious. He couldn't be serious about anything. I'll see him tonight and tell him about Tim. He won't mind. Ah, uh, You're sure getting tough to ride with since you took up this love seriously. Don't kid about it, Bumps. Sorry, old timer. I know just how you feel about it. My second hitch in the Army, I got it so bad in San Diego. Yes, you told me that story. And another time in Manila, I... Oh, I know that one, too. Seems every time I'm setting pretty she up and marries a plumber, a bartender, a bootlegger or something. Well, you can't blame a woman for showing good sense. Uh, uh... All right, understand this now. You get the Fabians at 9.50 exactly. That gives you just 20 minutes in which to do your work. You know what the boss wants? Don't touch nothing else. Now, Harry will pick you up at 10.10 on the dot. He passes me at 17th and Douglas in front of the cab one minute later. Hello. Yeah. It's the boss. Yeah. Right. Everything's set. 7.41 exactly. Okay, I'll see you at the masquerade. All right, you guys, set your watches with mine. 7.41. Now, this thing is time to click. Don't come there one minute ahead or one minute later. I want you to hit every connection right on the nose, just like the boss planned. Harry, the cab's a brown top. I'll be standing right beside it. 17th and Douglas on the dot. That's right. All right, now all you guys drift out of here one at a time. <laughs> Johnny. 
Sure, Tim's a swell guy, and I can't say that I blame him. I guess there's nothing left for me to say except to wish you both lots of luck. Huh? Yeah, thanks, Johnny. You've taken me around a lot, and I appreciate oh, it. Oh, go on. We had a lot of swell times together, that's all. I knew from the beginning that that's all it would amount to. You made it very plain. <laughs> Say, would you excuse me a minute, Helen? I got a phone ace. I forgot to tell him something about a car. Surely. That's some news for you. Taking Dan Regan to the hospital in the morning. No, what hospital? What time? Mercy Hospital Ambulance is going to call for him at 9 o'clock. You better get a message from me before then. Just 10. Get rolling. I'll get the girl interested. Bye. I believe I recognize the young lady. Yes? May I steal this dance? Well, I can scarcely refuse anyone in a cardinal throw. Second door, right on time. Seventeen, calling car seventeen. Robbery reported at Fabian Jewelry Store. Investigate. That is all. Hit it, Bumps. That sounds hot. Hang on to your hat, boy. There they go, Bumps. Pick them up. You want it. 
Something slipped, though. Radio Patrol was just one member behind our cars on the getaway. This it? That's it, all right. 67. Looks like they ditched it. You check this cab at the Brown Cop office. I'll look it over. Okay. Oh, Harry and the boys get clear. I'll need them in the morning. Regan? Stick with that car. I've got a hunch and I'm playing it right now. Well, don't forget I'm out here. You stay here, huh? Well, hello, officer. Making lots of arrests. This the first one tonight. Now, you'll have to turn me loose. That lady's very thirsty. Now, get this straight. There's nothing phony about this outfit except the mask. The badge is real, and so is the gun. Now, come on, take a little ride. Quiet. Now, listen, Tully, your kidding is just about enough, see, and I have plenty of it. Go play with somebody else. Uh-oh. I'll take care of that. Now, come on with me. What's happening here? This fool says I'm under arrest. Arrest? What for? Are you with him? Yes. Well, I'll need you for a witness. Come on, out the back way. I won't need this disguise any longer. Neither will you. Well, take it off. Tim! Oh, that was a terrible joke to play on us. This is no joke, Helen. Well, you mean you're actually going to arrest him? Yes. Well, that's ridiculous. What for? For helping in a robbery that was pulled just a little while ago. That's impossible. Well, he's been with me at the dance all evening. I'm sorry, Helen, but I'm going to have to take you both in. Come on, both of you. Helen, sit up in front. Headquarters, Bob. Captain, I'm sure of my evidence. Ah, uh, the Fabian job was Standish work. Regan caught him attempting the same thing, and it's like him to try and wipe out his one failure. Davis is our first link in the chain, and we'll hold him in spite of all the lawyers in town. What's the girl like? Why, she's... she's Helen Regan. Oh, I'm sorry she's mixed up in this, even innocently. Have them both come in. Captain. I think this is the first time my sympathies have been against the police. Oh, well, even so, I don't suppose you'd object to answering a few questions. 
Not in the least. Well, what was the longest time Mr. Davis was out of your sight during the evening? Ten minutes. Perhaps 15, but not more. He couldn't have taken part in any robbery. I'm sorry to say so, Captain, but I think this arrest is the result of a grudge. Well, how so? Officer Conlon made it for personal reasons. Well, I'm sorry, but even so, I'll have to hold you, Davis. Uh, O'Neill, take him upstairs and book him on a concealed weapons charge. Now don't worry about it, Helen. I'll get bail posted. Now, I will want you to testify at his hearing later. And uh, Conlon will drop you at your house on his way back to his zone. Thank you. I'd much prefer a cab. And uh, tell your father that the boys wish him luck. I'll see him in the hospital tomorrow. Thank you, Captain. Good night. Cheer up, son. We've got to learn to take it in our business. Anything wrong, dear? No, Dad. I'll be right there. I really don't think you should go with me, Helen. Dr. Bertram said I could. And I've arranged for a substitute to take my class at the school. Oh, you've been upset this morning. Oh, now, don't get nervous about this, dear. Everything's going to be all right. You bet it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, the ambulance is here. Oh, they're a bit early. I'm surprised Tim didn't drop in. We probably got some extra duty on account of the big robbery. Well, I sent with Dr. Bertram to take Lieutenant Regan to Mercy Hospital. Yes, we know about it. You better help me, Charlie. He's in a wheelchair. Good morning, Lieutenant. All ready to go? All set. That's fine. You think you can make those stairs all right? Oh, easily, miss. Oh, hello. Hello. Is the ambulance for Lieutenant Regan? Yes. They're taking him down now. We'll see you around headquarters in a couple of weeks, Lieutenant. He's hoping you walk back up those steps. Uh, thanks, boys. just gave Johnny Davis about three hours stiff grilling downstairs. Did he get anything out of him? Ah, he's a clam. Wouldn't know Bill Standish if he ran into him. He keeps squawking all the time about you friend. Well, I guess he's not the only one who thinks that. Oh, snap out of it, will you? You'll never solve nothing sitting around here like a stuffed duck. Come on, I know a spot where we might pick up a lead. Oh, I think I'll stick around here. Something's apt to break. Okay, boy. I'll follow my own hunch. Car 61. Calling car 61. Ambulance. That's funny. No sign of Murray and Evans. Well, they were on duty here. They're ringing the Regan bell. It must be a mistake. I think I'll run over and tell him that he's already gone. That's funny. No answer. No men on duty. There's something out of line here. 
If you've come after Dan Regan, why, the ambulance has already taken him. Could the hospital sent two by mistake? No, that's impossible. How long ago? Oh, five or ten minutes. Uh, maybe longer. What kind of an ambulance? What color are they? Well, one very much like that, a dark one. Did you notice a number? No, why should I? Phone headquarters. Get Captain Hart personally. Use your telephone, come sure, on. Sure, come ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's Standish, all right. Now canvas that neighborhood and report any details as soon as you get them. Hey, Bill, send out every flying squad in the city after a gray ambulance. Full descriptions now coming in. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Watch for dark gray ambulance containing Lieutenant Dan Regan, his daughter, and two men operating for Big Bill Standish. Report instantly any trace of this conveyance. Now, I want a dragnet thrown around this town that a cat can't crawl through. Get things moving. Yes, sir. Captain Hart. Yeah, uh, come in, Tim. Captain, I think I can find Standish. How? Through Davis, if you'll turn him loose. No, no, it won't work, Tim. He's too smart to go to Standish. He knows he'd be trailed. Oh, certainly he is. But I think I can make him talk. Yeah? Well, four of us couldn't. If he knows anything, I can get it out of him my way. I'd like to take a chance and let you try, Tim, but... Uh... You think a lot of Dan Regan, don't you? Oh, you know that. Well, so do I. Now, Helen's in just as much danger as he is. That's right. Minutes count now, and if we're going to do anything to help them, it's got to be done quickly. I'll risk it. Oh, uh, Colby. Colby, release Davis. I'll send up an order. Well, there's just one thing more. Yeah? You'd better relieve me from duty. Well, why? Because in order to handle this thing my way, I can't do it officially. All right, you're suspended indefinitely. Thanks, Captain. Mm -hmm. We'll make it work. <laughs> this company upstairs, a patient. I'll see what I can do for him. It'll be a pleasure. They had to bring his daughter, too. Couldn't get out of it. Better change that suit. We're leaving town in a half hour. I'm Dr. Medicine. I'm sorry to have put you in such an uncomfortable room, but it's sometimes necessary when patients are apt to become violent. Hello, Standish. I figured you'd recognize me, even with this disguise. I'd recognize you in the dark. Even in the dark? Well, maybe so. Well, I guess you know what's coming. Yeah, I guess. Regan, I'm not going back to Laurel. I didn't like it there. You're the only man who ever beat me. You might get on your feet and do it again. It's too bad she had to come along. But witnesses are dangerous. And I never leave dangers behind me. I wipe them out as I go. No, there's no chance to get out. Try if you like. But I'm not such a bad fellow as you think, Regan. I'm gonna give you a break. Chance for a final visit with your daughter. Not a doubt of it. Oh, we must do something. We can only hope and pray the police trace that ambulance. Otherwise... Well, I guess Standish wins. Couldn't make that rap stick, could you? That's because you're a pretty smart fellow. Oh, yeah? 
What's the idea of that? You know where the Regans are because you know where Bill Standish is. And before I leave this office, you're going to tell me. You're crazy. I don't know a thing about it. Now, I'm not on duty now. I'm suspended. I'm not a cop at all. I'm just a fellow who remembers that as a kid, you couldn't take it. I think you'll crack now. You were the little fellow in school who always told on the others. Johnny, I'm betting you're still yellow. And you're going to tell me what I want to know or get ready to take the beating of your life. Somebody must have been through your office. Remind me to thank Bumps for that, will you? Oh, no, Johnny. You're going to have to use your fist this time. This is Dr. Madison. He's at 2141 Cottage Grove Avenue. Phone Captain Hart. Tell him to send a squad to 2141 Cottage Grove Avenue. Standish. Have him picked up. Here, give me that gun. Well, thanks for that chance. Cars 30, 31, and 32. Calling cars 30, 31, and 32. Go to 2141, 2141 Cottage Grove Avenue. Big Bill Standish located there. Surround premises. Harry, I've got a hunch that Dr. Madison's going to lose his first two patients. <laughs> Operations are dangerous. Yeah. Someone's coming up the stairs. Oh, Dad, talk to him. Promise him anything. Oh, it wouldn't do any good, dear. He's just a madman who's been waiting for this one moment. Uh... You'll have to take it sitting down, Regan. I'd rather have given it to you on your feet. I'd hope to hear you beg. I wanted you to whine. Well, I guess you're too game for that. So is the girl. But that won't save you to one of you.
Tim, are you hurt badly? Where are you hit, Colin? He just winged me. Hey, how about Standish? He's down inside. Come on, boys, let's get him to the hospital. Watch me, arm. Easy with him. these steps, I got a thrill out of it. So do I. But for a different reason. Yeah, she is a great girl. <laughs> 